I'm Lucy and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have another monologue video. Um, if you haven't seen, I've already done a video on monologue list of kind of suggestions of plays and playwrights for you guys to look at when you're looking at monologues. This video is going to be a slightly more general video on how to pick a monologue, what you should look for, what you should avoid, all these kind of things. I have a few points of my own that I'm going to go through and I also asked you guys for some questions on Instagram so anything that I've not covered in my points that you guys asked I'll be sure to answer your questions as best I can. As always be sure to leave any more questions in the comments down below and I will get back to you as best as I can. So the first point I have is making sure to look for something within your playing age. Your playing age is usually around plus or minus five to ten years either side of your age. For some schools they specifically say that they want you to have a monologue that is within your correct age range but some schools don't mind at all so just be sure to check that out. Usually though it's good to play a part that's around similar to your age or within your playing range because it is then something you could relate to. This brings me on to my second point about the relatability of the character to yourself. Obviously it's absolutely fine to play a character that has a completely different life to you because that is part of the joy of acting is embodying someone who isn't you. However, it often helps for monologues, especially in a situation where you're going to be really nervous if the character has some sort of element that you can relate to as a person and that you could maybe understand where they're coming from and what they're going through. This could be something as little as they're from the same place as you, they're the same age as you, they have the same number of brothers and sisters as you. Anything tiny that could help you relate to the character as an actor or actress will be really helpful. Again, with relatability, you need to consider accents. So, for example, if the play is set in Glasgow but you are from Essex, and the play has no relevance actually to being in Glasgow apart from that's where it's set but there's no mention of it, the character is not dependent on being from Glasgow, then you can do that in absolutely any accent that you want. However, of course, if you're doing a play and the character is from Northern Ireland and she makes he or she makes specific reference to being from Northern Ireland and being Northern Irish, if you're then doing it in a Glaswegian accent, it's going to be a bit strange. So just be sure to check where the play is set and if that bodes any relevance to the actual monologue you are doing. For example, I did a Scottish play and it is set in Glasgow. I am originally from Glasgow, so have a Glaswegian accent that I can whip out when I need it. I did my monologue in a Glaswegian accent for some schools but in my RP kind of Englishy whatever this accent is um, for other schools because it didn't actually matter for the specific monologue if she was Glaswegian or not. Obviously it is nice to be able to show a panel if you have another accent that you can um, show to them. So for me at RCS it was really good that I was able to show them that I do have a Glaswegian accent as well as this accent that I currently speak with. Again, the main thing, if you're looking at this video to help you with auditioning for drama schools is please, please, please look at the school's guidelines. I have done separate videos on audition experiences at schools, but be sure to look at the school's website because some schools specify that you have to do the monologue in your native accent. So therefore a play which is set with an accent that isn't your own and that is relevant to the monologue maybe isn't the best choice of a play to look at. Now moving on to the actual dates of the monologue. Often in auditions they will specify they want you to do a classical monologue, whether that be Shakespeare or another classical, that's fine, but often then they will specify. Often you will also need to do a contemporary monologue. Contemporary is where the grey area kind of lies because what is classed as contemporary? It's quite easy to class what is classical, but when it comes to contemporary there's kind of this weird grey area between 1900 and 1980 that's like is that contemporary and some places will class it as contemporary some won't some schools will specify that your contemporary has to be post 1980 i know i got myself bitten in the bum because i chose a monologue that i really liked realized it was 1975 and the school specified it was past post 1980 so do not do the same as me and check when the play is written so once you've found a play that you like that is in the correct time scale and it is a acceptable accent for you you need to look at where you are able to cut your monologue some plays it's super easy it's like here to here perfect two minute monologue bish bash bosh nothing needs to be changed however often in plays more likely than not you will find that the character doesn't speak straight for two minutes without another character coming in and saying a line 
obviously if the other characters lines are not 100% relevant and the monologue would still make sense if you were to remove these lines you can go ahead and cut those lines there is no harm in doing that and loads of people do it for auditions then for example on the other hand if your character has a monologue that's kind of split where there's a bit of monologue some duologue text another bit of monologue a bit of duologue text another monologue if it's Still works with the story and with the character's thought process that you can take one two three and put them together again that's absolutely fine you are more than able to do that cut around and take out bits that don't make sense with the flow of the story you just need to keep the character's intention and motivation the same that being said you can't go changing lines adding lines changing words that is not allowed you cannot change what the playwright has already written and you certainly cannot add your own words on the vein of not adding or changing any lines specifically you need to be careful not to add your own little quirks of how you speak so in contemporary it's often very hard when learning monologues word for word because it is contemporary and close to the way you speak you'll be inclined to add ands, buts, likes, its instead of it is, changing tiny words. You may think that these aren't a big deal however the playwright has chosen these specific words for a reason and you need to respect that. So be sure when you're learning your contemporary monologues, obviously Shakespeare you need to learn word for word as well, there is no question in that. But specifically with contemporary, I know I find it hard to not add little bits of my own speech that I, how I would talk, you need to make sure you are true to the character and the words that the playwright has chosen. Next, this may be obvious to some people, but I know that um, different people have different knowledge on what to choose for auditions. Please make sure that your monologue is from a published play. It cannot be from a film, it cannot be from a book, it cannot be from a TV show please make sure it is from a published play and this is super important. Going on this, there is also the question of standalone monologues which are not in a play, they're not in a film, they're not in a book, they're literally just pieces of writing that are monologues that people write. These are such a grey area and everyone has a different opinion on them. Some schools are very, this is a big no-no and they're not allowed. A lot of people's issue with um, standalone monologues is obviously you lack character progression. Because your character is just in this one monologue, they really often lack depth and you need to do a lot of work yourself to ensure that you know what's happened before in your head, what would have happened after in your head and the journey that your character's been on. Often doing a standalone monologue can be a lot more work because you need to put all the bits of the puzzle together yourself to ensure that you've got a fully well-rounded character. Finally, on this point of knowing your um, character and knowing their development, please, I pray to you, read the play that you're doing the monologue from. Do not make the mistake of just reading, finding the monologue on a website online or in a monologue book and then not reading the play. Go out, go to a library, get the play. You can get most plays on Amazon usually, about nine pounds, buy the play and read it. You will unlock so much information about your character. You need to know what's happened before, what's happened after, the journey that they've been on. Finally, it is important when you go into auditions, know the playwright, know your character name, know your character age, know your location, know all this information, and this will all come from reading your play. So if you take one thing from this video, please let it be, read the play that your monologue is from. On to some of your questions. I hope I've addressed most of these questions already, but anything I've not addressed, I'll just be sure to go over. One question is, what monologues did I use for auditions? My Shakespeare was um, Helena from A Midsummer Night's Dream. It started with the line, oh spite, oh hell. And I love that monologue. Um, I'll also do a video on Shakespeare monologues. If anyone's interested in that, let me know. For my contemporary, I did Sharma MacDonald. When I was a girl, I used to scream and shout. And I did Fiona's monologue. Another question, how to find good monologues. As I said, I am going to do a whole video on this. But I would say your best place to start is on the internet or in a library looking at plays. Now, this one is an interesting question. What monologues do Erdang like to see? Now, monologues for Erdang, I'm sure you only have to do one. And I think for my year, you could do either contemporary or Shakespeare. But again, please don't just take my word for it. Check the guidelines because audition guidelines can change any year. 
I don't know what they would specifically like to see. They want to see something that you can connect to the character, you can do an honest portrayal of the character, and a monologue that you enjoy, I think, is a huge importance when it comes to monologues. Oh, another question, no goes for monologues. Again, I would say probably standalone monologues, things from film and TV. As I said, standalone is such a great area. You could say no-go monologues are ones that are hugely overdone, but as I've said in so many of my videos, if that is the best monologue for you but it's overdone, do it and just be confident in it and be aware that someone might do the same monologue as you, but it doesn't matter. And this final question that I kind of haven't addressed would be what monologues do most panels like to see? Oh, every panel is so different and every panel is not going to love your monologue and you'd be silly to assume that they would. So I'd say again really just do a monologue that you love and that you feel comfortable with. A panel would like to see you portray character progression and um, that you have an in-depth knowledge of your character and that you can relate to them and you can portray them honestly and I think that is what is most important for monologues. So I hope this video has helped some of you guys out. Wow it is very long I'm gonna have fun editing this. So and I hope I've answered some of the questions that you guys asked over on my Instagram. If you want to be involved in these videos be sure to follow my Instagram I'll put it on screen now and be sure to ask me any questions. I often put polls on my Instagram and also please feel free to message me if you have any specific questions. I love helping you guys out with audition stuff. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe down below for lots of videos in the future and I'll hopefully see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!